Hey, Carm Capriato, the Aftermarket Podcast Guy with Remarkable Results Radio's episode 477. Hey, what do shop owners need to become successful? Well, man, that's the million-dollar question. My guest, Danny Sanchez, gives his all to help provide you with a path toward your uncompromising success. Are you ready? I can safely say that our industry is not very good at answering the phone. Welcome, aftermarketers, to Remarkable Results Radio. Listen to learn just one thing from today's episode on your journey to remarkable results. Hi, friends. Carm Capriato here with the Aftermarket's original podcast with a library of over 600 essential teachings that will help raise your bar to a new level of excellence. Hey, Remarkable Results Radio is proud to partner with Napa Auto Care and the upcoming 2020 Napa Expo. Are you registered yet? Hey, join Napa in Las Vegas at this uncompromising event April 6th through 9th, 2020, where you'll discover the latest news and industry information. Mark your calendar. Plan to be there. Enrollment's begun. Contact your Napa store to find out more. I'll see you in Las Vegas. Hey, there isn't a day that goes by that we don't learn about some new technology. And each day there are new solutions to old problems. The aftermarket evolves and the marketing trends shift. And this podcast will continue to deliver forward-thinking ideas for you from our industry's essential players. Now, if you've got a thirst for knowledge, be part of our ecosystem. Subscribe at RemarkableResults.biz slash insider and get into the flow. Hey, since you're listening to the industry's quintessential and legacy aftermarket podcast, you owe it to yourself to download and subscribe to a listening app. Now, I actually have a really cool one of my own. Go to your app store or Google Play, key in Remarkable Results Radio and download. Within two minutes, have the episode library at your fingertips. Link your smart device to your earpods or vehicle and enjoy Commuter University. Hey, Danny Sanchez, CEO of Auto Shop Solutions, likes to keep it simple and direct. Having been a successful shop owner, Danny is able to share his past experiences as it relates to the challenges of the day. He sees your success as the totality of the shop from the ground up. He shares some key insights that will apply to any shop or organization. And in this conversation with Danny, we continue to build on the trending talking points that my guests say are the fundamental building blocks of your success in today's shop. Talking points in Danny Sanchez's bio are at RemarkableResults.biz slash E477. Hey, Danny warns that every time you start something new, there's a heavy investment of time. And remember, time is a commodity in shorter demand than money ever was. So learn to spend it wisely. Hey, warm welcome to Danny Sanchez from Auto Shop Solutions. Hi, Danny. Karma, it's always great to see you. Oh, same here. You and I were hanging out in Chicago a couple of weeks ago. Wasn't that like yesterday? <laughs> it's amazing where the two weeks have gone. We were on a panel together. I did a bunch of recordings, and I hope we can get them released as a podcast. We were with ASA Illinois, and and I said, whoa, you're going to be at ASTE. That's where we are right now. You're in my hometown. I know. Now. I'm in your hometown. This is my backyard. I'm in your own town. So Danny calls me a couple of days ago and he says, you got to come early. You got to come out to the, uh, out to the office. And I just couldn't make it work because you've got a phenomenal culture and a great business. And I hear so much about the environment that you've created for your people. And I promise next year at ASTE, I'm coming to your place. Or sooner. You never know. Or, or you sooner. Might, you might make it down this way. Cool, cool. But yeah, you you really don't know Auto Shop Solutions until you see the office. I know. I heard. Rumor has it. I've seen some pictures, but I'm sure the invi- just being there is better. Hey, uh, you and I uh, wanted to just have a totally open agenda hmm? and kind of maybe dazzle our, um, our listener. And, you know, you and I were talking off mic, and you said to me, you know, Carm, shop owners have everything they need to be super successful. And I wonder if they really appreciate that. Yeah, I don't know that they do or that they realize it really. And, and I think I think hearing this, you know, if I was a shop owner who'd been in business for five, 10 years, I might think, uh, you know, well, one, who's this Danny guy and who's, who's he to tell me that I know everything that I already know. But gosh, you know, it's really not super rocket science. And the information has all been out there for a long time. And, you know, Running a shop and having a healthy culture and then, uh, you know, making sure that you're running it by the numbers. These are all not new. The only things that really change is the technology that we're working on. 
but the rest of the business really hasn't changed significantly in 20 years. So why aren't we good at it already? And it uh, seems like we're looking for something that is, yeah, we need to make improvements, but we're looking for something that's going to evolve the business into something that it's not. We're still fixing cars at the end of the day. Silver bullets. Silver bullets. And it drives me nuts. I, 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 I hate to say the amount of shop owners that are looking for that one thing that's going to put them over the edge, that's going to make them more profitable, that's going to put them in that boat that they've been trying to get, that's going to that just going to make it available to them to spend less time in the shop and be able to move move on. Or it's that one tool, that one trick, that one piece of information that's going to make everything that much better. So look at, I just did an interview with Dirk Fuchs and Jeff Bly, yeah. two trainers, right? Yeah. And Dirk's from Germany. Right. Been here five years. ZF from, he's from ZF. Yeah. Right. And so what does he say? It, it lends itself to what you're saying, Danny. He says, Carmen Europe, we do knowledge-based training, then problem solution based. Because but we we know in Europe you've got to know how it works. Right. And he says, in the U.S., it's all about problem-based solutions. We, mm-hmm. And, and, and we, we kind of dug in a little bit, and, and he almost is like, we don't have enough time here. Europe does things so differently, and he explained it. you got to listen to the episode. So here I am. If I was going to learn to be a good CEO, but I don't really want to know, know how, I just I want to stumble my way through, and I want to learn to be a better marketer, mm-hmm. and I want to be a, a better cash manager, and I want to be a better HR person, and I want to improve my culture. I'm not going to get trained. I'm not going to go learn how it is. I'm just going to try it and see what works. And that's where people are failing and struggling. A domino effect of making dif- different decisions and continuing to move forward. And there's there's a lot of systems and processes that have to work in the business in order for it to continue to be successful. So it's not one thing that makes it work. There's a lot of things that make it work. But once you find something that's relatively working, the idea is, is that you continue building on the successes that you have and not continue to review the same things over and over and over again. you got to move on and continue to fix the problems at hand. I mean, it's uh, not uncommon in business that we spend our times on the largest issues. So you're trying to find where the biggest pain points are and then go about fixing that, make it better, and then move on to something, something else. Well, it seems that there's some areas of the business that shop owners tend to linger on like for long periods of time and never move on to other places. And a good example of, I, mean, I only started talking about culture in the business three years ago. This is the first culture class that was done in the industry I did three years ago. Rumor has it you've won an award on I your did, culture I class. I did one award for that. Congrats. Thanks for, thanks for saying that. Yeah. And since then, now there's a lot of people talking about culture. All so, of a sudden. All of a sudden. But before that... The culture in the business and actually retaining the employees ahead was never a topic of conversation. So here we're all trying to fix car counts and GPs and trying to make all the numbers work. And we're still losing technicians at a rate that the business can't sustain. So there's common core business issues that we've only begun to address. We're ignoring them. We're not embracing them. Mm-hmm. And, and, and we've been talking about culture here for four and a half years on the show. But actually, Danny, you're right. We've never intensified it more than in the last year because enabling a great culture in a business, I'm going to tell you this right now. I think it's the single most important thing that anyone can do. Mm-hmm. Well, it just you, your, your investment into your people is, is one of the largest investments that you're making in your business. And nothing moves without the people... T- Turning wrenches. What I love the, to come the, to work for Danny Sanchez because I love come to work for Joe Shop Owner because right, right. Because it, whether it just be enjoy the environment, you enjoy the people that you're working with, all of the above. But there has to be some kind of glue that holds the company together. People are all moving in the same direction. You're right. Absolutely, it's glue. And uh, uh, I, I just encourage anyone who's listening to go to my website, go to the tag cloud. Look for the big word business culture because it's the biggest one in the tag cloud, the word cloud where, you know, every episode is kind of, if you will, parsed out and you'll find, uh, I'm going to guess more than 50, 60 episodes on culture. In fact, I even have a business coaches lab and we've been talking a lot about culture lately. So, you know, I I mentioned silver bullet before and and, and I, I think you said to me the shiny we're shiny, the penny, shiny pennies, right? Shiny penny driven. It's right. the same thing. G- give me, give me quick. Give me fast. Give me cheap. Yeah, I mean, as soon as uh, as soon as something new comes across, or so whether it, it's uh, it's in one of the magazines or it's uh, displayed or advertised somewhere, and people start talking about it, then it's the new shiny penny. It's the new thing that's going to save my business or vault me to the next level, right? For, for a week or two, or, uh, maybe, and maybe not even that, right? Maybe it doesn't help at all. But you, it's the it's the quick sign on. 
And then it's their, you know, the early adopters are the ones who jump all over it and give it a try. And then the followers kind of come in after that. And by then they've kind of figured out, well, it's not as a big deal as they thought it was. Uh, but at that point, they've already spent the money on it and the amount of time. The thing is, is you know what? Okay, so um, let's talk about shiny pennies. It's not just the money. It's the time. Every time you start something new, it's a huge investment of time to get it on a roll and get it to where it's working and it's integrated. And you're actually spending the time on having to monitor it to make sure it's working in the first place. So every change is a heavy investment of time. And the reality is, Time is a commodity that is in much more short demand than money. I have to tell you something. You just nailed it. Because I believe so many of the things that we do in our life every day is a time suck and we don't stop to really think about it. Let me just share with you. I'll do a social post. I don't do it. A, a service does it for me. Right. And all of a sudden I get a ding within like seconds. And I love my listeners, and I love my alumni, and it amazes me how I caught somebody with Facebook opened right in the middle of the day, right and on the third screen over, maybe right you know being a solopreneur like I am, and I'm sure you you bring accountability of you know time structure you couldn't be as successful and as big as you are if you didn't if you didn't figure out systems and processes right I run out of time at the end of the day, and then I stop and think, why right you're so right, yeah. Why? Ask yourself this, my listener. Why are you running out of time to do the right things? Mm -hmm. What are the right things? Well, every business is different. 250,000 shops or more in this country of ours, and there's 250,000 different ways to do things because we're independent. Mm -hmm. And my way is the right way. Right. As long as there's a way and you're successful, then your way is right. But if you're not and you're struggling, and I think, Danny, maybe that's where we're headed, is we've got just too many struggling shop owners. And what are we going to do about it? What, what can we do to help motivate you, you're listening here, to take a step uh, to fix your business? Uh, what advice would you give me? You know, and I, I'll make a general sweeping statement. And I realize that there are a lot of shops that are really good at this, but I, based on Based on our business and the volume of phone calls that we actually drive to to clients to be able to listen to the phone calls and mm-hmm. see the volume of calls that are being converted and not being converted, I think I could safely say that our industry is not very good at answering the phone. Mm. Tra- phone training has been around for a very long time, and there's some controversy on maybe some of the best ways to answer the phone. Some people might say it's better to say good morning or not say good morning or thanks for calling. I mean, you can, you could debate sure. all those like little details, right? But at the end of the day, we're still not very good at it. And our conversion rates are nowhere near as good as they could be. If the shop owners only did one thing next week that would change their business, it'd be to be better at answering the phone and customer service and taking care of people at the counter. Everything else that everything else, fixing cars, of course, technology needs to, we have to keep advancing. And I do understand the challenges that ADOS bring. I get all that. I understand we have to keep going, but just in perspective, I was there when the first car came in with an MC solenoid in the carburetor with a wire running out of it, two oh. wires sticking out of it. I was there and I was there when the technician just cut the wires and said, problem solved. <laughs> so I've seen all that come and I understand technology can continue to evolve, but there's one thing that has not changed in this business is people and the customer standing at the door is everything to the growth of the business. And every single shop owner listening to this, their business would change. Their financial situation would change with just one more car a day. Their bottom line changes significantly with just one more car a day. And for a shop that's already getting eight, nine, 10 phone calls a day, they're only closing half of them. They only got to close one more a day. There's the answer. Okay, so so here's the the goal is one more car a day. How do we fix it? We we work on the phone skills. It's much easier to work on phone skills and improving the front counter performance than it is to fix almost anything else in the business. The one problem that's the most difficult to fix in any shop environment, and any coach would probably agree with me, is car count. You can't immediately solve car count. Profitability, GPs. Production, those things can almost be fixed overnight because yeah. it's just setting new numbers in place and then right. working through them. Yeah. That's overnight changes. Distributing parts, availabilities, other things. You can almost fix those things in days yep. to make things better. Yep. Car count, can't fix that overnight. You got to earn it. That's it. Yeah. So, so treating people right at the counter, of course, I, I know preaching to the choir, 
but the skills involved in going from doing pretty good to getting people in to doing really well to getting people in whole nother ball game. So how about uh, the, the whole service advisor coaching thing? Um, I, I think it's going to be a huge industry. Yeah, but it hasn't been. I've, trained thousands of service advisors literally over the years. And I haven't done it in a very long time, but because it died off, just the the demand wasn't there. But my point is, I think it's more important than ever. And I think it needs to be reinvented. It it is. Well, in this, and this is leads into And I don't mean training. I mean, coaching one-on-ones, listening to the phone calls and working on those skills and investing in that front counter. Well, I got really good at it just by doing that myself. I mean, there's things you you don't always have to have somebody tell you what to do. I did all that by getting my own recorder and sticking in front of me and listening to my own phone calls. What a great point. It's painful, but it can be done. You don't have to have somebody drive you through that. But the CEO could do it. Just take the recordings and sit down once a week and go over what he heard that wasn't uh, exceptional. Like all our, all our clients have the ability to record all their phone calls. Most yeah. of them do. Some of them don't. But they can listen to all their inbound calls. Yeah. They're already recorded. I mean, today, it's even the technologies there make it easier. Back then, I had to put a, actually hit record on a on a button on a recorder sure, to sure. make it do that. Today, it's all automatic. All automatic. Yeah. So how many CEOs that you know are sitting down, listening to the calls? Uh, you know, you, you don't want to sit down and, and beat someone to death. You want to say, hey, that was a great call. Now let's talk about, you know, the sandwich. Good call, bad call, good call. <laughs> you know what? Scary, the very few. Okay. If you're listening out there and you have this technology, you got to do something about it. And you're right. Earlier, you said... Everything's at our fingertips to solve our problems, but we're just not doing anything about it. Just some things are just not taking the steps to make it better. And of course, you know what? I get it's your, uh, you know, the smaller the business is, the more you got to spread yourself around that right. you're thin, right? Yeah. If you're a one man operation, hey, you got to do everything that you can, and it's tough to keep customers happy. I get you're juggling an mm-hmm. awful lot. But as you get just a little bit more time, um, you do have to pick and choose where your time is best placed in order for the most results, right? Mm-hmm. So, it's not uncommon for us to go into the back and try and figure out faster ways to fix the car, or we're looking for mechanical solutions, or we're looking for some kind of digital, digital tool that's going to make this easier to get done. And, and it's not a matter of, it's not a matter of that the tools that are available and the new technologies are not good because they are, you just can't replace the customer experience. Uh-huh. Hey, it's Carm here with news about the new Napa Smart Sign, previously known as the Digital Menu Board. I like to think of it like a silent salesman on a TV near your service desk. It's an easy way for you to increase customer awareness of your current promotions and educate them about needed repairs and service. In other words, having a Napa Smart Sign will supercharge your sales. Napa Auto Care tests have shown one out of five consumers ask for a repair or service they've seen on the board. And targeted promotions resulted in double-digit increases. One auto care shop owner said, I've received amazing feedback. Customers are actually asking for additional services they see on the screen. Now that's what I call getting results. You choose the content for your Napa Smart Sign from a library of auto care services and repair topics. The Smart Sign comes with preloaded content. Just about anything you can think of is available from alternators and alignment to wiper blades and wheel bearings. There are over 150 topics to choose from. Templates can be customized with your location branding for a professional look. Some of the options include customer reviews from Kukui, Demand Force or Mechanic Net, live news, and even the weather. Whatever content you choose, it's preloaded for you. Just as important, it's easy to change your services, prices, and video content anytime you'd like. Plus, the latest Napa national promotions are downloaded to you automatically. Of course, having a Napa smart sign gives your auto care center a professional, state-of-the-art look and feel that tells customers, I'm on top of my game. Now, that builds trust, which means recommendations are accepted more readily and customers spend more. Find out more about what Napa smart sign can do for your business. Talk with your servicing Napa store owner to find out more about the smart sign and all the other reasons to become part of the Napa Auto Care family, the largest network of independent repair shops in the country. I was talking at the pre-party last night to a couple of young uh, shop owners. I'm impressed with how many young people are here at ASTE. It's just that that's, that's one of my big takeaways. And they were talking about going from a one tech or a two tech shop and, and growing. And it's time now that I need to hire a service advisor. And I think the best advice that just hit me now, if anyone is small and they're looking to grow, 
We want you to grow. We want you to grow profitably. We want you to grow successfully. We don't want you to lose a lot of money in 10 years and, mm-hmm. and, and hurt and kill yourself because there's so much information available out there to steer you in the right direction. But my thought was, if I was a shop owner who I, I love to wrench and I, I just can't seem to get out of that mode and I hired someone from my counter in order to bring that person into an accountability factor, get the call recording technology working. And then if you don't spend your time at the counter and really listen and know what's going on, then carve the hour out every uh, once a week or on Saturday mornings at home and listen and groom. My, my word is groom. Right. And, and, and I think that would be one hell of a tactic in order to grow, grow, grow the, the business from small to large and, and keep finding, you know, hopefully you find the right per the people person right. that, that, that can get those skills. Do you guys hold uh, training classes for phone skills? So, so I've been getting asked an awful lot of that recently. Oh, really? I'm thinking about coming back out of retirement. So I'll, I'll, no. let, I'll let you, I'll let you know. Maybe in minute. the next 30 I see you days. everywhere. Don't tell me you're retired. Well, retiring from service advisor training. So ah. I've been getting a lot of requests lately. So I might come back to that. Good for you. Yeah. What's new at uh, Auto Shop Solutions? Anything? The digital marketing changes on a weekly basis, not on a yearly basis. It, so because we, because Facebook and all, they're all they're they're not your friends anymore. They love to make changes on you. Huh? Oh yeah, they love to make changes. And we, you know, anybody who says that they've got this all figured out and their arms all the way around it is is delusional. Uh, any agency out there, we just barely got the tiger by the tail. We're, we're hanging on, but it doesn't mean you can't perform really well, yeah. but the changes happen faster than you really can keep up. The technology for, uh, for websites has significantly changed. Mobile is huge, right? And mobile, especially yeah. when you talk about the younger audience, yeah. mobile is primary for them. There's new technology coming out. That's going to affect a lot of people that, uh, maybe haven't invested in the the, uh, the latest technology or they're a little bit behind. When I say a little bit behind, it could be only three to four years old and be pretty far behind at this sure, point. Sure. But a brand new uh, browser for uh, for mobile is, is released. It's called Cake, if you haven't heard of it. No. And the algorithm in Cake actually, just as an example of one of the things that it does, it's going to have a huge impact on how people are found. You may pick Google as your browser search, search engine, search, as a yeah, search engine yeah. of choice in Cake, so it's like Chrome or one of those. You can pick which browser, the okay. browser inside the browser, you can pick which search engine you prefer. Yeah. But it will still change the results based on the speed of the site's ability to, to display. Oh, wow. So the algorithm for who's more popular or who's done a better job with SEO is right out the window if the website actually loads slower than a competitor's. Okay. So now... The pressure's on you. Now, now, Right. Now the technology that it's built on and that it was built efficiently is more important than ever. Whereas until now, uh, you could get by a little bit with that before. Not anymore. But you could be mobile friendly, but you, what you're saying is that cake is going to judge you on response time. Yep, exactly. Wow. And you could actually end up being sent down the list because of a slow mobile website. So if it's built on older, older technology or poorly built and load slowly or running on a bad server, older server, you won't be on the top of the list. Uh, anybody has to think about uh, how upset you are when you can't get a website up. I, I know. I, take, I mean, it takes 87% longer for a mobile site to come up than it does on a desktop, which you kind of argue, why would you want to look on a mobile platform when it takes that much longer than it does on a desktop? But that's where we're at in life. People would rather have their phones in front of them than a desktop. That's, that's, that's realities. In cake or in any website, the more star reviews, the more will I will I uh, come up higher on the list. So in in cake specifically, no, they're actually their algorithm is one of the main points is that it comes up faster. The whole point of cake, okay. the whole point of cake is to load it faster. Speed. It's using it's using some tools in the background that are preloading some parts of the website All for right. it to perform faster. So the faster performing websites are actually coming up first. But wait a minute. Uh, okay, so if if I was in cake. And I and Google was my search engine, right. and I called um, uh, automotive service in Raleigh, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. And even though I had fifty five star reviews, mm-hmm. if it doesn't come up fast, I'm not I'm not if ranking. It's a slow loading website. The mobile version is slow loading, yeah. and you got three competitors that are actually loading faster than yeah. you, regardless of the reviews. Yeah. They'll actually they could, in theory, of how it's working show up before you. Why is that? Is that critical because of the time challenge that we are, the, the, the millennial workforce that needs speed fast, 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 fast? That's a, what they're doing is they are marketing themselves to the millennial generation the who wants stuff now. Now. 
right? There, there's no time for later. I want it right now and I don't want to wait for it. Uh, so the, you know, the few seconds that it takes to load, they don't have the patience for. So if your site is, well, one, if you're not mobile friendly, you're not coming up very well at all now. They, then they won't have no zero tolerance for that. But now the, there's software out there like Cake that are actually only showing the fastest loading ones. So they're actually okay. eliminating right. everybody else. So I would be able to choose Cake as my browser on my mobile someday? You could download it, right? Actually, right now? You could do it right now. Wow, okay. Yeah. Um, websites, uh, how important are they going to be in the next five years? It, it's the, it, the website is still the anchor to everything. The anchor. Nothing works with the website not doing what it does. So your social media is actually, is your social media is a point for Google to see. They see it as a social, they see it as a social signal that you're active in your social media. And that does have an effect on your algorithm with your search engine optimization. But the website is the anchor for it. Your the judgment is first on your website. And then they look at other things that are happening outside on the internet and, and add that to the equation. So Danny, I got a website. I've been a DIYer on my website for so long. Is that going to sustain me in the future with all the search and what, uh, obviously not. I'm not sure it's not going to load right. I'm not going to get SEO. Wait a minute. I have to do SEO. What's SEO? For some people, it's going to be fine. If you're here in an area that doesn't have a lot of competition, then you don't need to spend a lot of money. And maybe a home built uh, website will do you just fine. But if you're in an area that has competition and you've got to, you've got to like work to get in the right space. Cause if you're not on the first page of Google, you really have got nothing. Nobody goes to look at the uh, oh. second page. You've heard the joke about the second page of Google, right? No. What is it? Where do you hide a dead body? <laughs> second page of Google, <laughs> right? Literally nobody goes to look there. So oh. if you're not there on the first page, you're getting, you're getting next to nothing. And even, even people are so well trained by Google right now that if you do a search and you don't find what you're looking for on the first page, what yeah, do you do? Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you type in something new, right? And then start and start over again. Look for something else. But yeah, the, you do. But you as keep, far you keep as hunting, the, yeah. the home built systems are going to be okay in non competing areas like they always have. But okay. if you're in a competitive area where you have to rank, then no, unfortunately, something more professional is going to be okay. necessary. I, I've seen uh, chat boxes uh -huh. come up a lot. Yeah, a, tr a trend. Uh, I've seen it actually more. Is it a trend? No, it was a tr it's been a trend on and off for eight, eight to ten years. Is it on it's, now? It's nothing. It's nothing new. They've had them for a long time. And here's my answer to the chat boxes. Anybody who asks me, I'll tell them the exact same thing. I've been saying the same thing for ten years. If somebody's available to man them during open hours, in other words, somebody's sitting at a desk, they can answer it immediately when the chat comes through. Then knock yourself out. I think it's a great idea. But if you don't have somebody who's dedicated at the desk who can reply to a chat immediately because you chatted right before you sent it says how may i help you that's what the chat box says right mm -hmm. so the box box up picture of a pretty girl nice looking guy right nobody ever looks like them but they always have like picture good looking person yeah, there yeah. and it says how can i assist you and you go in the box you say oh you know what i'll go ahead and ask a question you type your question in and you hit send and then you wait and you wait and you wait and by that point, you're so annoyed. You say, why don't I just pick up the phone? Or do I even need, really need to ask this question? Don't piss off a customer. Exactly. You I mean, it's just setting yourself up that if it's not an instant response, it's just like letting the phone no, ring 10 me. times instead of three. Do you remember Sarah uh, Frazier at, in Chicago? And she, she went off a little bit on, I'm a millennial. I and, do. And, I, and I did this appointment thing. Right. And how long it took to, to, right. to reply. I'm not sure you had anything to say about that. I, I can't remember. But is this a trend where if you can't get a reply back on an appointment time within X amount of time, maybe it's 24 hours, you're going to lose that opportunity. Oh, absolutely. You are like people are looking for when I'm calling, if I'm calling, if I'm texting, if I'm uh, sending in a form, uh, whatever the request that I'm sending in, I have an immediate problem that I'm trying to solve. It might be that I'm just trying to get an oil change. It yeah. might be simple, but it's a problem. It's something I need to get solved. But more often than not, it's I got to check engine light on. I've got a brake warning line on. My brakes are squeaking or engine's not running right or I've got an oil leak. They've got a problem. They will continue to contact people until they find somebody to fix the problem. People don't just call one person and say, okay, I'll, I'll see if he gets back to me and, and solve the problem. When they're looking for somebody, the sooner they get that done, the better. So when they're shopping and many people look for, look for answers to these solutions, at lunchtime during the day, that's when they have time available. So they're out looking for somebody. They call. That person doesn't answer. They're going to call somebody else. Not try and call back an hour later. Say, so, well, let me find the next person if they really want to answer the phone. Got it. Is there, I mean, there's a ton of business lost in not serving the customer up quick enough. And the more 
devices, the more ways that we are creating avenues for our clients to contact us, it makes it more complex. There's no question, no question about it, except for the one that comes straight to your phone. Your email comes straight to your phone. It's super easy to reply on the phone yeah. or call people back or text them back. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Nope. You're not tied to a desktop computer for responses. Good stuff. Good stuff. Always love to learn from you. Now, here's a question. You're an IT, if you will, IT marketing company, and you're out doing training on culture and service advisors. What gives? You know what? Nobody's ever asked me that question before. That's super interesting. I, I think I have an answer for you, but it's funny nobody ever asked. I know you do. Yeah. Um, again, and I get asked on all sorts of different topics. Um, because you've been there and done it and you're passionate about the industry. Is that your answer? I, I guess that would be like the standard answer. Like if I just had to put a stamp on it and say. 30 second up uh, elevator. Right. Just because just just I love helping people. I have been through some stages in business that people will be lucky not to have to do. I have really learned from the school of hard knocks yeah, yeah. Um, and been through, been through and seen some of the stages in our in our industry, the evolutions, and I'm not that old a guy, but I'm old enough to have seen pl plenty. And especially when the, when the industry was waking up to a different way of doing things, I saw, I saw it all. I grew up with it. That perspective of building several businesses under that format actually gives me a lot of experience. And I don't say that I have all the answers. I, I don't, but I have a lot of wisdom that comes from years of experience. Sure. And I do like to share it and help people get past some of the issues that I've dealt with. And some of the things like we've been talking about, like the silver bullets, yeah. uh, they're just some things that you don't have to keep trying over and over to try to make improvements. There's some areas of the business that are pretty simple to solve. Well, you're a giver, and I've heard you get up uh, on panels and speak, and uh, you, you do speak from the heart, and uh, you're, you seem to never be selling what you sell to earn a living at. You're always out there wanting to help people. For that, I'm happy to do, because it's not my style. Uh, and not to say I don't get business from it because it's a secondary effect of it. Mm -hmm. I do understand that. I'm not, I'm not silly about it, but I do enjoy just delivering the information. And that's why I get invited back so often. Yeah, yeah. I've been speaking at the, the speaking and training at the largest conferences now for over 12 years. Sure. And that's why I keep getting invites back because I just deliver the information. You nail it. Usually always nail it. Hey, um, I'm in your hometown. Thank you for coming, Danny Sanchez, Auto Shop Solutions. I appreciate your great wisdom. It's always a pleasure talking to you, Carm, and uh, look forward to doing this again. Thanks for being on board to listen and learn from the premier automotive aftermarket podcast. Until next time.